Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Right by that same name, you can find us on TuneIn. On iTunes, it's Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk football. Let's talk football futures. Now it's August 1st, 2014. No doubt many of you are looking at futures, wondering which teams have a chance and which teams don't. Which teams are underrated and which teams are overrated. This video is about a team that I think is overrated right now. The casinos are pricing the San Francisco 49ers at the same odds, a plus 650, to win the Super Bowl as the Denver Broncos, the reigning AFC champions. You've got to be kidding me. This must be a joke, right? Let's just think it through. Let me talk about some factors that the market, quite frankly, might not be taking into account. I encourage gamblers to do their own homework. I'm just telling you the view from my seat. Right? I believe the Niners are being overvalued because they made three consecutive NFC Championship games. Right? They only made it to one Super Bowl, folks. Right, but they did make it to three consecutive NFC Championship games. But what you need to think about is the following. Right, first, I would argue that the three best defensive players on the 49ers are Patrick Willis, Navarro Bowman, and Alden Smith. Right, if you want to throw in Justin Smith, feel free go ahead he's a great player too but understand right the Niners have no margin for error in this division right the NFC West has the reigning Super Bowl champions the Seattle Seahawks they also have the team that had the best record in the league that did not make the playoffs last year the Arizona Cardinals who have one of the league's best coaches, in my opinion, Bruce Arians. You may recall what Bruce Arians did with the Indianapolis Colts the year Chuck Pagano had to take a leave of absence. That was an extraordinary job. He followed that up by doing an extraordinary job last year with Arizona. So if you're going to win this division, you're going to have to get out the gate fast. You're going to have to expect to win a bunch of games. You can't give away games. You can't have key players, some of the best players on your team, missing several weeks of action. Now understand, linebacker Navarro Bowman is one of the best defensive players in the National Football League. He certainly is one of the absolute best linebackers in the entire league. In the playoffs last year, he got injured. The injuries are serious. He tore his ACL and his MCL. Right? The party line here in the Bay Area and keep in mind, they want to keep the fans energized. They want to sell NFL merchandise, 49er paraphernalia. But the party line here in the Bay Area is that Navarro Bowman is going to miss the first six weeks of the season. Six weeks. Right? This would be like the Seahawks missing Marshawn Lynch for a month and a half. That's a huge loss that 
can't be overstated. Right? The Niners are not going to be remotely who they were on defense with Navarro Bowman on the field last year. Right? Replacing him is just not going to happen because big time talents like this are irreplaceable. So the Niners, at least for the first six weeks, are not going to be operating at full strength. That's going to put them behind the eight ball, not just in the division, but also in the postseason seeding. Understand the world has changed a bit in the NFC, right? Aaron Rodgers is going to play the entire year. Right, last year where he breaks a collarbone, that's really a bit of a fluke, wasn't it? Also think about it, the Chicago Bears. Think about their wide receiving core for a second, Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey. Right? Now they have another year under Mark Tressman's tutelage. Don't you think that team's gonna improve? Right? The New Orleans Saints last year. Think about them. They were unbeaten at home. They made the playoffs. They then won a playoff game by beating Philly on the road. Let's stay in that division for a second. Carolina Panthers. Understand how good the Panthers were last year. Weren't they the two seed in the NFC? Didn't they come to San Francisco last year and beat San Francisco? Right, these are just some of the teams jockeying for playoff spots. The Arizona Cardinals, right? An argument can be made, and just look it up, that Larry Fitzgerald right now is the second best wide receiver on that team. Right, that team's changing, that team's getting deeper. I don't believe the Niners really can afford losing a Navarro Bowman for a month and a half and still compete with those teams. But yet Vegas is telling you that not only are they going to stay the course, Vegas is telling you that Colin Kaepernick has as much of a chance at winning the next Super Bowl as reigning MVP Peyton Manning. I think the plus 650 is too rich in part because of Navarro Bowman's injury. Let's talk about another factor, Alden Smith. Understand, Alden Smith is one of the best defensive players on the Niners. Right now, Alden Smith recently served 11 days in jail. Right? Why? Because of felony weapons possession and misdemeanor DUI. Well, understand... Unfortunately for Alden Smith, that was only one of the criminal proceedings he was involved in. He has another criminal proceeding ahead of him, right, after he gets out of jail in Southern California for going to an airport and according to reports, and it's conflicting, saying, I have a bomb. Right now, there are many, count me among them, who would question Alden Smith's mental stability. Be that as it may, just understand, Smith has in front of him in the next few days a meeting with Roger Goodell, who is under fire from many for the very light slap on the wrist that he gave Ray Rice for, according to reports, knocking out his girlfriend. Right? There's a chance especially since Alden Smith is a repeat offender, right? It's two different criminal matters, right? And, of course, he's already had to plead no contest in one of them, right? There is a chance that Alden Smith might be suspended for one or two games, right? In this league that suspends people more for a marijuana possession than for domestic violence, who knows what Roger Goodell's going to do. The point is this. Of the very best defensive players on the Niner roster, 
two of them might miss the beginning of the season. Right? There again, I don't see how they could be given the same chance as the Denver Broncos to win the Super Bowl next year. Let's talk about more problems. You know how running backs, when they age, can sometimes fall off a cliff. You remember years ago, Earl Campbell going from being all-world to looking like he couldn't play in the league, right? To not making it past a few years in the league. Now, the 49ers have Frank Gore, right? Frank Gore is one of the better backs. But Frank Gore is older, right? Who knows how much longer Frank Gore is going to go? Now, it wasn't a concern because the Niners had one of the league's best backup running backs in Kendall Hunter, right? Kendall Hunter really is a guy who allows coaches to sleep well at night. Because if something happened to Frank Gore, you knew Kendall Hunter would be able to come in and there wouldn't be a lot of drop-off. Well, that was before Kendall Hunter's season-ending injury. Folks, he's out for the year. Suddenly, that 49er running back position has become a lot more tenuous. Understand the other guys on the roster are Marcus Lattimore. You might recall him in college as a teammate of Jadavian Clowney's, right? He was a great back in college until he suffered a devastating college career-ending knee injury, right? Well, he, of course, hasn't played in the pros. There's a big question mark around him. He's now the primary backup to Frank Gore. LaMichael James, a burner, is really a different kind of back. He's not a between-the-tackles runner, right? To me, the Kendall Hunter injury is a major one, especially given how much Jim Harbaugh likes to run the football. Look at his play call distribution. Let's talk about another problem. You heard me mention Jim Harbaugh. Now think about it. You have a head coach who has made the NFC Championship game the last three years. How many coaches can say that? He's one of the elite coaches in the NFL. Understand, he's been a great coach for a long time. He was the coach of the Stanford Cardinal when Andrew Luck burst on the national scene. Understand, he was the coach of the Stanford Cardinal when Stanford pulled one of the biggest upsets in college football history, taking down the Roman Empire of USC in Los Angeles in, I believe, 2007. So he's an elite coach. Now you've seen other coaches get pay raises, right? Pete Carroll comes to mind. But yet, it was recently announced that the Niners were going to wait until after the year to talk with Jim Harbaugh about his future. Excuse me? Say what? You know, understand the end of the year is perilous because you have some very high profile teams. Very high profile. In terms of jersey sales, merchandising, um, team market value according to Forbes magazine, that might be looking for a coach at the end of the year. Right? The New York Giants, for example, have an older coach, Tom Coughlin. Right? If the Giants win a Super Bowl, Tom Coughlin might say, hey, that's it for me. I'm going to ride off in the sunset. If they don't win a Super Bowl, if they finish below 500, you know the way the New York press is, Coughlin might not be able to exit on his own volition. Understand the Giants are a high-profile team with a rich history, exactly the kind of team that a young coach looking to earn his stripes might want to be a part of. Let's talk about another team. One of the most valuable teams in the entire league in terms of market value, profile, selling jerseys, are the Dallas Cowboys. 
Now let's just say Jerry Jones has been accused of a lot of things in his life. Being very patient isn't one of them. The Cowboys have been about 8-8 eight and eight now for years. Right? Are you telling me that if Jason Garrett misses the playoffs this year, that Jerry Jones is not going to try to get a young, vibrant replacement, someone like a Jim Harbaugh who has a proven track record of success both in college and in the pros. So to me, the Niners are playing with fire. Right? You don't want to look like you're lukewarm on a coach that's led your team to three consecutive NFC Championship games. I just don't think that Jim Harbaugh and the Niners are the best of friends. Right? I don't like the idea that the coach doesn't have job security, especially after this track record. Right? To me, I feel more comfortable about John Fox's relationship with the Denver Broncos than I do Jim Harbaugh's relationship with the San Francisco 49ers. But yet, the market's valuing the Niners on par with Denver in terms of their chances at getting to the next Super Bowl. Let's talk about another problem the Niners have. You heard about the Legion of Boom in Seattle. Right? Richard Sherman, pro bowler, just got a big contract. But understand, he's one face of a unit. I would argue the best free safety in football is Earl Thomas. If I were to ask you for the five hardest hitters in football, and yeah, I'll put James Harrison on the list, but another guy who has to be on that list would have to be Seattle's strong safety, Cam Chancellor. Right? Seattle has arguably the best secondary in all of football. Now let's compare and contrast their secondary with the Niners secondary. Eric Reed, is he on your Pro Bowl ballot? Antoine Bethea, is he on your Pro Bowl ballot? Tremaine Brock, decent player, probably the best of the bunch. But again, we're not going to confuse him with Richard Sherman. Then you have a rookie, Jimmy Ward. Right? I want you to look at corners, even good corners. Patrick Peterson had rough moments during their rookie years. Right? The NFL is not college football. I would argue that there's a talent gap between the Niners secondary and the Seattle Seahawks secondary. Right? Finally, let me close in saying, you know, home field advantage matters a great deal in the NFC. Right? I believe you can close your eyes and know that the Seattle Seahawks are probably going to win at least seven of their eight home games. We'll give them one bad outing, but they're going to win at least seven of their eight home games. I believe we can close our eyes and say the same thing about the New Orleans Saints. Right? Home field is that important. I don't believe we can say that about the San Francisco 49ers because, like the Cowboys a few years ago, they're moving into a new stadium. Right? They're, they'll be figuring out the stadium just like their opposing team will be figuring out the stadium. I believe the Niners would be lucky to do better than 5-3 and three at home. Right? Because the stadium's too new. There's no real home field advantage there. But understand, if they're 5-3 and three at home and Seattle's 7-1 and one at home, Seattle would have a two-game jump on the Niners. Seattle could match the Niners in road record and still win the division by two games. Right? So to me, the fact that the Niners are moving into a new stadium creates uncertainty. An uncertainty that, 
some of the other teams that are highly thought of by casinos right now, Seattle, Denver, don't have. So to sum up, I think the Niners are overvalued, right? I don't like the Navarro Bowman injury. I don't like the Alden Smith suspension risk, right? I don't like the Kendall Hunter injury. I don't like the uncertainty regarding the future of coach Jim Harbaugh with the team. And I certainly don't like the fact that they're moving into a new stadium at a time where they have no margin of error in the division. Let's talk about another problem. You know, Jay Cutler might have the best set of wide receivers in the league. Right? Marshall and Jeffrey are as good as it gets. Right? You're telling me Mark Tressman has another year to work with that team. The Bears could be dangerous. Green Bay. Last year they made the playoffs, and that was without perhaps the best quarterback in football, in my opinion, for several games. You might recall Aaron Rodgers actually had a broken collarbone there. Right? I believe Green Bay is going to be a bit rejuvenated this year. Let's talk about what's happening with the Saints. You might recall Sean Payton got suspended for a year. Then last year he comes back. The Saints make the playoffs. The Saints win a playoff game. Don't you expect the Saints, now that they have Jimmy Graham under contract, to pick up where they left off last year? Let me say this, too. The two seed last year, the Carolina Panthers, right? Don't you believe that even today they have one of the best defenses in the National Football League? I can tell you I know they have one of the best up-and-coming quarterbacks. Now, Kelvin Benjamin, the rookie wide receiver that they picked, my goodness, this guy could be a Calvin Johnson. Carolina did beat the 49ers in San Francisco last year. I believe Carolina is going to be a force this year. The point I'm making is simply this. Last year the Niners made the playoffs but then found themselves playing a lot of road games. Right? It hurt them. All the back-to-back -back road games. Well, if they don't win their division, and keep in mind unlike some of these other teams that are highly ranked by casinos right now, Right? The Niners, unlike them, actually have the defending Super Bowl champions in their division. If the Niners don't win their division, aren't you concerned about where they get seated? Aren't there enough quality teams in the NFC where the Niners might again find themselves playing a lot of road games in a row in the playoffs? Isn't that a concern? Right? Wasn't Jay Cutler injured last year? I know Josh McCown did a great job, but Jay Cutler was injured last year. What happens if Cutler's there all year and has more of a rapport with his wide receivers than he had last year? Right? Aren't the Niners, in fact, a much riskier pick than, let's say, the New England Patriots, who played in the AFC Championship game last year and who don't have a juggernaut, like the Seattle Seahawks in their division, right? You don't have that downside risk. With a team like the Patriots, you almost know they're going to win the division, right? You almost know that. You don't know that with the Niners. I believe the Niners are overrated as of August 1st, 2014. I don't like the fact 
that they're going off in casinos at the same price, a plus 650 on the futures, as the Denver Broncos to win the Super Bowl. That seems preposterous to me. Also, let me close in saying this. What I want you to do is compare and contrast Peyton Manning's ball distribution, the number of times he hits different receivers, with Tom Brady's ball distribution, the number of times he hits different receivers, with Colin Kaepernick's ball distribution, you're going to find that Kaepernick threw in an ordinate percentage of balls to two guys, Anquan Bolden and Vernon Davis. Now it's true Crabtree was hurt last year. Okay, we'll give them that. But how do I know that Colin Kaepernick is going to take the next step to have the kind of ball distribution that the more veteran guys in the league have? Because aren't those the guys he's competing against? The Rodgers is. The Breeze is. Right? The Brady's. The Mannings. Right? I mean, the point is, you know, a lot's going on with that Niner passing game. Right? Brandon Lloyd, I know he looks good in camp, but he's new to the party. Stevie Johnson is new to the party. Kaepernick doesn't seem to have a high comfort level spreading the ball all over the field. Do you believe a team he leads should go off at the same price as a team led by Peyton Manning? Especially given the multiplicity of weapons that Manning has. Isn't Demarius Thomas still a Bronco? Right? Isn't Wes Walker still a Bronco? Isn't Julius Thomas still a Bronco? Right? So I think in the big scheme of things, I think the Niners are a bit overrated. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Talk about the NFC. Talk about the NFC West. Talk about teams that you feel are overrated and that you feel are underrated so that gamblers can get an edge on the casino. Just compare and contrast the odds you're getting between, let's say, the 49ers and the New Orleans Saints. Understand the Saints have a very easy home schedule, comparatively. Right? How are the Saints getting such better rods than the San Francisco 49ers. I'm surprised by that. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.